Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to be discussing linear and nonlinear systems of equations. Our example is to solve the system where x squared minus y squared equals 21 and x plus y equals 7. Let's go ahead and work through this solution. So this is a nonlinear system. You can tell because you have the squared terms on the x and the y in the first equation. So usually when solving systems, I like to look for ways to eliminate variables. However, in this case, I don't think we can add or subtract anything in an easy way in order to eliminate any of the x's or y's. So let's use the substitution method. Let's take this second equation, x plus y equals seven, and solve it for y. So we have x plus y is seven, and then we can solve this for y by subtracting x from both sides. So minus x minus x, these cancel. And so we have y equals seven minus x. So now that we've solved for y, what we can do with this is we can plug it into the first equation. So when we do that, we're going to get x squared minus, and instead of y squared, it's going to be seven minus x squared. So parentheses seven minus x squared equals 21. Okay, so we solve the second equation for y, and then we plug that into the first. So this is x squared minus parentheses. Okay, I'm gonna show you a trick or a technique so that you can multiply this out without having to use FOIL. So if you have a minus b and you square it, this is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And a good way to think about this formula is think of a as your first term and b as your second. You square the first, keep the sign, you multiply them and double them, so that gives you 2ab, and then you square the last. Let's apply it here. We square the first, so 7 squared is 49. Minus, because we keep the sign, we multiply these and double them, so 7 times x is 7x, times 2 is 14x. And then plus, and you square the last, so you have x squared. Very nice. And this is equal to 21. Let's go ahead and distribute here. There really is an invisible minus 1 here. So basically, we're going to distribute that through and change all the signs. So we have x squared. Negative 1 times 49 is negative 49. Negative 1 times negative 14x is positive 14x. And then negative 1 times x squared is negative x squared. This is equal to 21. Good. Oh, look at this. The x squareds go away. That's really good. A lot of times they don't go away, and it's just, it, it creates more answers. So that worked out very nicely. We have negative 49. There we go. Negative 49. It's exciting. <laughs> Plus 14x equals 21. And we need to solve for x, so we'll add 49 to both sides. So plus 49, plus 49. We end up with 14x equals, ooh, let's see, 49 plus 50 is 70. And then divide by 14, divide by 14. It's going to give us exactly 5. What a nice answer. So x equals 5. That is the x-coordinate of our solution. To find the y-coordinate, we can take this x and plug it back in. So here we have y equals seven minus x. So if we plug in x there, we get y equals seven minus five, so we get y equals two. And that would be the solution to this problem, x equals five and y equals two. You could write it as an ordered pair. You could write it as five comma two. That's usually the preferred way to write it because this has a graphical meaning, right? Basically, this is the point of intersection of these graphs. So, I'm not sure if you know, but this first graph here, x squared minus y squared equals 21, this is, this is a parabola, a uh, hyperbola, sorry, excuse me, hyperbola, that looks like this, okay? Graph of this first equation looks something like this, roughly, and this one's a line, okay? This is a line, in this case. So, um, basically, this ordered pair is where the line, and the hyperbola intersects. They intersect at exactly one point, and that point is five comma two. So 
But yeah, the idea is you pick an equation, solve for a variable, and then plug it into the other equation. I want to emphasize that we pick the bottom equation because it was easier to solve for y. It would have been much more difficult to solve for y in the top equation because we have a y squared. Hopefully this video has taught you some mathematics and hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out more videos on Chegg. Good luck.